And again, we're here inside Mission Control. Now, while we're getting ready for a launch of a Soyuz craft tomorrow, uh, there's some other training taking place here in the control center to get prepared for uh, NASA's next generation vehicle, Orion, and its launch taking place later this fall. Joining me again is uh, Flight Director Mike Serafin, who's going to be overseeing the team for that uh, EFT-1, Exploration Flight Test 1 launch later this year. Uh, Mike, you joined me a little bit earlier this year in February when we were talking about the recovery test out in the ocean that was taking place, and I understand this week you guys are getting ready to do uh, some simulations here in Mission Control. Now, real quick, before we get into those, just just for just in case it's the first time anybody's hearing about this, give me a quick overview of what EFT-1 is, what you guys are hoping to accomplish. Right, so uh, good morning and uh, thanks for having me, Dan. Um, mm -hmm. EFT-1 is uh, the first space flight of the Orion capsule. So we're gonna fly Orion into a high Earth orbit um, and it's gonna do a high energy return and mm -hmm. test out the, uh, the critical systems required uh, before we put humans on board and go into deep space. So it'll launch out of uh, Cape Canaveral Air Station on a uh, United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy Rocket, mm -hmm. Launch Complex 37. And uh, it'll do two orbits around the Earth, and uh, the launch vehicle will boost it uh, into a low Earth orbit, the first orbit, on a due east inclination. And uh, it'll fly from the Kennedy Space Center around the Earth once at about 100 to uh, 380 nautical mile orbit. And then on the second orbit, the upper stage on the Delta rocket will boost mm -hmm. it even higher, and it'll go into uh, what we call a higher Earth orbit, and uh, it'll exceed over 3,000 nautical miles. What that'll do on the on the high end uh, of the orbit is set up a high energy return mm -hmm. uh, for uh, to test the heat shield, and uh, it'll put 85% of the energy into that capsule that it'll return uh, from deep space or a a, a, a um, return from the moon on. So mm -hmm. it'll, it'll test out the heat shield and all the critical functions on Orion and make sure that it's ready to go before we put humans on it uh, later on. And this is, you know, this is a much very, very different reentry than we've been used to seeing over the last, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, it basically is returning back to the Apollo uh, era mm -hmm. trajectories where uh, we you know, in the, in the 60s and 70s, we sent humans beyond Earth orbit and captured it into lunar gravity. We're going to do that same thing uh, for uh, downstream flights for Orion, but we're going to basically mimic and set up the initial conditions using the, uh, the Delta launch vehicle on the upper stage and really uh, test the capabilities of the spacecraft. Okay, so again, really different test than what we've done in decades, so really important to train for it, obviously, and you guys are going to be doing some of that this week. So tell me a little, about, a little bit about what these sims, these simulations are going to be this week, and you know, who's getting involved from the flight control team, what are you guys going to be doing? Right, so I'll be here in Mission Control with my flight control team. It's mm -hmm. a blended team of NASA and Lockheed uh, folks. And uh, we'll be just down the hall in the blue flight control room. It's where the uh, International Space Station uh, operations were conducted before it moved to the present day room, uh, Ficker 1, that you see with us uh, on TV today. And uh, the, uh, my team will be working with a team out at the Kennedy Space Center in the, the test and launch control center, which is uh, used to power up the spacecraft. Shane Roski and his Lockheed team will mm -hmm. configure the Orion spacecraft and get it ready uh, for launch. And then at liftoff, uh, we'll take over in mission control. There'll also be a, a team of managers located on the Cape Canaveral Air, uh, Air Force Station side of the house, uh, lo located in a facility called Hangar AE. That mission management team, along with an engineering team also at the Kennedy Space Center in the operations and checkout facility, we'll all work together as one big team, the Orion team, and uh, basically make sure that the spacecraft is ready to come home and that we're ready to handle any scenario. And uh, we've been doing a little bit of training on the MCC side, and we're mm -hmm. going to bring in the, the larger engineering team and the mission management team and train together as one big Orion team. And, and uh, test out the brand new program that we've established and the brand new uh, concept of operations because uh, it is a new spacecraft. It does have different capabilities and the mm -hmm. uh, program structure and engineering team is different. Prime contractor is different. So we're working together to establish a healthy uh, program culture and a, and a brand new uh, team, uh, the Orion team, and we're going to test out our concept of operations this coming week. And it's an exciting point because we're, it means we're getting really close to flying mm -hmm. this thing. Well, I mean, it, it's... Very integrated. It sounds like you're getting, you know, everybody together who's going to be there for the actual show once it goes off. About how many sims do you guys typically do, you know, leading up to this kind of a flight, or how many are you planning to do over the next year or so? 
Yes, yeah, so the total number of simulations, we're doing about one a month. Okay. Uh, so we started back in the December time frame, and we'll mm -hmm. probably launch uh, in late fall time frame uh, whenever the spacecraft is ready. So uh, we'll do about a dozen sims by the time we're ready to fly, and uh, about a third of those we're going to involve the mission management team and the engineering team and, and really uh, flesh out that, that uh, concept of operations for the, the launch to flight flight to recovery and then integrate it with the engineering and mission management team. And again, it's it's all new interfaces. Uh, some of it's gr uh, brand new ground infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the team members, uh, for the most part, have never sat in those roles before. They, they may have supported operations or engineering on different programs before, but uh, this being a brand new program, uh, folks have really never mm -hmm. sat in that seat before, so we're going to understand our own roles and responsibilities as well as how to interact with the other team members uh, as, a, as a large team and, uh, and successfully fly Orion together this fall. Okay, and I know, like you said, it's going to be testing out a lot of the systems on Orion, obviously, for the engineering folks and things like that. What are you and the team really hoping to take away from EFT-1 once it gets off the ground? So the key goals are to test the uh, critical systems on board the spacecraft. And uh, mm -hmm. when Orion becomes a free flyer in that second orbit, it is going to separate from the upper stage and test its own attitude control system, its own flight computers, its own guidance and navigation functions, all of the critical separation events like jettisoning the forward bay cover that is used to cover the main parachutes during entry, descent, and landing. It's basically mm -hmm. a heat shield that goes over the parachutes. Uh, the main parachute deploy and splashdown conditions. We're going to gather data on all that and make sure that the conditions on board the spacecraft are safe to put humans on board for downstream flights and uh, that the heat shield and all the other critical components do their job. And uh, if, if we learn that there's a little less margin in the system than we would like, we're mm -hmm. going to find that out in an unmanned flight test configuration. And then we'll be able to, uh, to basically ensure that human spaceflight later on is, is safe and successful. Okay, well, big flight coming up, big sims this week. I mean, real quick, sounds like you're getting excited. You got to be, you got to be getting excited that you know it's almost here. Yeah, um, my team's ready, and mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do a great job this week. Uh, the uh, the larger team, uh, w we've got to basically make sure that we're all on the same page, and that's that's what we'll learn this week, and uh, that's that's why we're going to do these large integrated uh, sims with all the all the players, and I'm sure we're going to learn a few things, and I'm sure we're going to we're going to fix those and, mm -hmm. and uh, modify them for uh, downstream training opportunities, but also for the mission. And uh, that's why we train, is to, is to really pound flat the, the plan that we've got and to make sure that there are, aren't any soft spots. And if we do find them, we'll go fill them in and, and we'll make sure that, mm -hmm. that as a team and uh, as, as an integrated uh, operations um, uh, team that we're ready to go. And, and I look forward to it. Again, this, this means that we're getting close to flying and we're, and we're going to fly this fall. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, again, Mike Serafin, NASA Flight Director, who's going to be overseeing Exploration Flight Test 1 later this year. Going to be doing some sims this week as they continue to march forward uh, towards that launch date. Again, the first flight into space of NASA's Orion going to be a really exciting time. As always, you can visit uh, nasa.gov slash Orion for all the latest in the program, news, pictures, everything you could possibly want to see. Mike, thanks so much for joining uh, me here today. I'll probably see you in the uh, sim room a little bit later this week. I uh, really appreciate the update. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me.